Recording is on. So last time we talked, Jesse, um, you had showed me some things you've done on the Plenty Get Back editor about um, using Code Mirror to edit some JSON, and then you're actually saving back to a repository. I've gone through and I've started kind of sketching out some ideas about some uh, kind of user experience stuff. Again, everything's in a rough shape right now. So basically, I don't know if you can see this that well, but I've been kind of just like sketching out some general ideas about how things might work, look at some point. And I've been mocking up, you know, like a, a, a very rough admin menu. I have some ideas about how to change this. Um, and I've been kind of coming at it from the lens of, well, okay, what do we have today and what can we make work today versus like the future? And like, let's get some kind of experience working today. In the future, there'll be more features that'll be added. But like, for now, this is what I'm thinking. Um, and then I've gone through and I've, I've kind of tried to add some of this on a first level. Uh, and let me just share my screen. I think that's probably the easiest way to, to do this. So uh, I've, I've gone over here. Let's see if I can. Okay. Do you see my screen here? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so this is the this is like the basic starter site, and I have up here. This is the menu. So I've already done the Pixie auth uh, to GitLab, yeah. uh, and then we we have the login here. Now this is just like a rough mock-up of what I think maybe some of the stuff will look like, right? So some navigation to the home screen, a toggle here for um, editing the current page. Yeah. Uh, this add button over here would be for adding new nodes. So like. Um, Somehow we'll have to do some auto discovery here. Uh, to So basically in our content folder, everything that's at that first level is a content type, right? So uh, I think the starter comes with a blogs and pages, right? So uh, having the ability to stamp out a new blog and a new page is something we'll have to think about at some point. Uh, right now, this does nothing. Uh, media is kind of the same idea. It doesn't do anything right now, but we have to have some way to interact with the um, uh, the 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 assets folder in our structure so basically uploading new files uh and then also having like a library of files now when i'm sharing my screen is my my video is off right you probably can't see me anymore yeah, yeah i can see okay. yeah. let me just yeah. oh you can see me i cannot oh, okay let me just stop so i don't know if you can see this at all but this is basically like idea of kind of like a media browser with some filtering yeah. and some ways to change things in a way to upload files so i'm thinking through that um netlify cms actually does something like that currently. So uh, th their model is a pretty good one, but I'm thinking through different ways. Like um, I, I think, you know, at the top, we could have filters based on like folders and you could kind of drill down. Uh, and also you could do a file structure. Again, that's not super important where we are now, but I'm thinking forward in, into the future for this stuff. And then um, I just want to log out. Clear rest, uh, rest, restriction with the files because you cannot uh, list them with, with Git. Oh, interesting. Or probably you can, actually. Yeah, true. Probably we can create a connection to the Git GitLab and then list the files there. Yeah. But you cannot list the files from from the current environment unless you have an index file. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Because you're saying like actually pulling it from like the assets folder here yeah. would be difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so these are supports it, of course. But... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, these are things we're going to have to think through for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, again, like this is just kind of like thinking yeah. through at this point. And I think kind of looking at some of this stuff uh, in the near future will be will, good to do, will be good to do. Another thing, just an, a simple logout button. I thought about kind of a user profile thing, but we're not really doing anything besides logging mm -hmm. in, logging out. And I, for now, I want to keep this as flat and simple as possible. So, you know, for iteration one, it's like, okay, all the bells and whistles can be gone away. Like, for instance, like I, I would love to have a little... Um, indication about how many changes have been made and then like yeah. being able to look through like history and stuff like that. But again, like that's getting way ahead of ourselves. Let's get mm -hmm. the basic stuff kind of working in some sense and then we can go back and fix that. Right. So, so these things are, you know, it's a, it's a flat menu. It should basically work. Um, and then, you know, from here, so you can go to a page like the about page, right. And then if you click on edit, mm -hmm. so this is, it's an ugly form right now, but this is, it. it's auto discovering kind of the field structure you have to to build out these forms automatically. Um, and then there's a code tab, so you could switch over here to your code mirror, edit the JSON directly like this. Um, mm -hmm. If you come over here, this updates on your, your field as well. So you can be like about the company or whatever. Um, and, and so this is auto kind of discovering based on your JSON structure, right? So uh, right now what it's doing is it's, it's doing a loop through your current content. Um, it's taking all the keys and it's making those labels. So like the, the keys mm -hmm. become the labels. 
Um, it said like it's going through, and if it finds an array, it does uh, you know goes back recursively and it tries to figure out oh, well what's in the array. It's like okay, these are long text fields. It's just you know they're over a certain number of characters. That's that's all that's happening right now. It's 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 not super smart. Um, and then yeah, it's kind of building like that. So for instance, let's see if we look at some of these other pages. Um, so like the admin page is an interesting one, right? So this is has a, a basic text field. It has an array of uh, different long text fields and it has, you know, like a, a, a Boolean, right? So true and false fields become Booleans automatically. So you can click this on or off and, you know, obviously it, it removes this block over here. So, um, so you can kind of like build out dynamic page layouts like that. Um, let me go to maybe like the home page and go to like this example here. So this is, this is the example I had put for content driven components previously. And I think it was hard for people to wrap their heads around what that means. And the idea here is that you can change layout based on your content, right? So for instance, we have block and ball right now. You could change this to ball and ball. And all of a sudden you have two balls bouncing off each other like that instead of the block rotating. So this form is interestingly enough, not being consciously constructed, right? So there's nowhere in my project code where I have to be like, okay, these are the fields I want. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just adding JSON. And as I add JSON, the form gets added, right? So okay. um, for instance, we could come in here instead of, uh, if we want another field in here, we could say like, um, subtitle, right? And the subtitle could be, yo, um, if you come here, uh, yeah, oops. Oh, I lose the, oh, that's probably what I did. Okay. Let's, uh, subtitle. Oh, I can't spell and comma. Okay. Yeah. Um, so now, yeah. So, so automatically would just like add that to your field. So basically you can build out your JSON structure and these things should, should automatically kind of be created. Now, this is not the ultimate experience that I want. I think some of these things look a little ugly and they're just a little unwieldy, but I'm thinking, you know, components will get a little better and I'll change these things around a little bit. And then some, at some point we're going to need a way to override, to allow people to take control of their experience where they say, Hey, I don't want this to be a text field like this. I want it to be something else. Right. So yeah. I eventually want to do that, but I, I want as much as possible, some kind of auto discovery happening. So you feel like you're just, you know, you're writing con a content source and then you're writing your templates. And as long as your templates can handle your content source, it should all kind of work together. And you should have a way to edit content without really thinking about it. So that's that's the approach I'm I'm taking here so far. Yeah, um, actually, which felt it's possible to get the props, read the uh, props that can be inputted to a comp component by. Is it initializing the component? I don't I don't remember, but it's possible to get the variables that mm. you can input to the, the props that you can input to the component. Oh, like setting like a defined value list kind of thing? Is that? No, uh, listing the names of the props that can that, that the component can handle. Oh, like allow, to allow it to be accepted? Yeah, like yeah. you can generate the form based on the Props that template can handle. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you cannot really know what kind of prop it is. Mm -hmm. Is it an array or a string or a pool and and so on? Maybe yeah. somehow with TypeScript you could, if if there's um, static checking. Yep. Of the code. Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, I think being able to do something like there's okay, there's a lot of things I, I, I need to think through here with this, but like you're saying, so for instance, right now, this is an array, right? And it's the array of text fields, right? Mm -hmm. So we could come here and we could, um, let's see if I can uh, go over to the end here. So we could add another one of these, right? Um, here is another long text sample. Um, and I'll just add a bunch of stuff, right? So, um, yeah. And so, so this gets added to the page, but, but ideally there should be a way on this form to manage, like we should be able to X out of, you know, one of these existing ones yeah. and we should be able to add new ones. And then, so to add to this list, like there should be at some point a way, like you're saying to define what's allowed, right? So for instance, yeah. maybe in this section, we only want plain text here, but right now there's nothing that stops me from saying, okay, sorry. And I know it's a little bit wonky, but I could add like a, an object, right? And I could say, um, name, uh, let's just say name two is, uh, Jesse. Hmm. 
And if I come over here, that should, so now I'm getting this new kind of feel here. So we might want to say, okay, and, and again, maybe this this field, we only want objects of a certain type and we, we want to define that. So at some point we need to think through those things so you're not able to do everything in the world um, and, and we're limiting it. So stuff that actually works with the page because because look at right here, you can see that our template has not been designed to handle this type of content, right? Like this, yeah. this object here. Actually, there's, there's some kind of um, prototyping for like ty types of JSON files. Mm -hmm. like, oh, is there? Like Sve Svelte, um, what is it? Like, for example, TypeScript.json, tsconfig.json has a the Visual Studio code reads somewhere the types fields that can be input to the JSON file. Okay. There are standards, some, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Um, JSON, I will just Google it. Sure. Quickly. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, yeah, I, I think there's, so there's a, there's a bunch of things I'm, I've been thinking about. So early on, um, I wanted this, so I wanted this concept of a blueprint file. So currently, uh, Plenty spits out, when you create a new content type with the command line tool, it spits, it spits out this file that's called underscore blueprint.json. And right now it doesn't do much, but I was thinking that could be kind of the idea of a scaffolding for creating, um, you know, n new new nodes of certain content types, right? Um, again, did you send me yeah. something? No. Yeah, I posted a link to so, the chat. Let me see if I can. Yeah, okay. eight by eight chat. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. JasonSchema.org. Yeah. Great. Okay. Maybe we yeah. could use Jason schemas to pull it out the form somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will definitely look into this. Um, I'll probably, in the video, I'm going to put some links to some helpful things in here. So I want to go over just a little bit of code, uh, and then just to kind of yeah. recap some of the stuff we're doing, um, and then talk about some of the challenges that uh, I was facing with what I'm doing and um, just some ideas for the future. So okay, so we, we'll look at this. I'll put a, a link to this in the the video just so we can refer back to it, and anyone else who's interested can too. Um, let's take a look at some code. So the way some of the stuff is set up is I, I basically. Um, there's a couple of challenges here, right? So I have this, I kind of broke up. Um, uh, uh, we have a JSON editor and a visual editor. I might change this to form editor. I think form editor is probably a better name than visual editor. Um, but basically what we're doing in our visual editor, which is uh, this half of the equation over here, right? Th this is the visual and this is the, the form, uh, the, the code uh, JSON editor. So um, wh what I did is basically I, I looped through, so we have our content object, right, for each page. And then I'm looping through those. And the way you can loop through objects here is you use object entries. Now, the challenge here, so we basically have to bind um, to, to the inputs in order to have this update here happen on our other objects, right? Like to have it mm -hmm. correspond to this and correspond to this. Now, the challenge uh, with, with object entries is it's evaluating something here. So binding to just the field value that you get out of it. So this is, you know, like the, this is the key is the label that becomes the label. Yep. And then the field is, is the value. Um, you can't just like bind to that field value because that has problems as described over in this issue here. So this is a, a stack overflow uh, thread about doing this kind of exact thing about how do we, you know, how do we bind to like the, um, yeah, uh, the nested guess, values? I guess the problem is only with things that variables that aren't objects because ob objects refer, uh, remain have the reference reference to the original object they don't copy. Yeah, yeah. So that's so that's kind of finding works with objects, but don't work with strings and booleans. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I was having trouble. So this this is an answer from Rich here talking about yes, mm -hmm. you can do this, but like some of the challenge and it's pretty thorough. So it was good. Um, and and so he's saying like the same thing is here. We actually have to bind to the original object. Like you have to pull where you are out from the original object. Um, Instead of so, or, oh. for example, instead of just going um, here, where's the example? So instead of just binding to option itself, which doesn't work, you actually have to bind um, to the options, the, the place in the original options uh, object, and, and pull it that way. Um, so I'll link to this in the issue as well. So I was running into issue, um, and essentially, you know, it was easy enough to to bind to this original content object for the first level, but mm -hmm. the challenge I was running into is we have nested 
um, we have nested objects, right? So for mm. instance, you can have an array that contains an object, which contains an array, which contains an object. And I needed to think about a way to, first of all, recursively do this, um, which I didn't know much about, but I've, I've since mm. discovered. Um, and let me flip back over here to the resource that's really good. And I'll, I'll link to this in the video as well. Um, but uh, Li Hao has a video here about using Svelte Self. So I don't know how much you've dealt with Svelte Self before, but this is a way to recursively call templates. So when you, you see a, a Svelte Self declaration, you can pass in um, your exported props to it. And then it basically calls that full template again. And I it, it took me a second to wrap my head around this. At first, I kept thinking like, okay, is Svelte Self like calling the loop that it's within again, or is it calling like the if statement when it's in again? It's like, no, it's calling the entire component in its entirety again. That's what it's doing. So this this took me a second. This video is awesome. People should check that out if they want to see more. Um, but what I did basically is so I figured, okay, we have to loop through on this level here, but I don't want to call this entire component again because I don't want to call the loop again. So basically what I do is I I, I, I pull this component dynamic form, uh, or form input, and then this is the form that I run recursively. So all this is doing over here is it's going and it's checking its field types, right? So it's saying, okay, what are we? Make sure we're not null, make sure we're not undefined, but then say, um, are we a string? So I'm, I'm making sure the string constructor constructor um, equals what this field constructor is. Um, so yes, it's a string. And then I say, are we a short string or are we a long string? Again, this stuff might change in the future. Um, and then I say, are we a Boolean? Okay, for a Boolean, we're a checkbox. Um, or are we uh, an array? Well, for an array, let's start wrapping in a field set so we know that's all related to this. And then let's loop through each item in the array and then let's let's call spelt self. So we're recursively calling this template that we're in, mm -hmm. and then we're we're binding uh, the the field value. And this time we're adding our key to it because we have to go one layer deeper um, into that array to to get these values to work again. So that's what we're doing there. Um, similar things happening with an object. Okay, are we an object here? Okay, for an object, let's let's loop through the object again and let's do something similar. Let's um, print the label there, and then let's make sure that we uh, recursively call this template again. This time we're going to. Uh, bind the field key here like this. Yep. Um, so that's what's happening. So that's what that's what allows you to kind of infinitely nest and have those um, fields come out together. But I was having trouble at first building um, this, uh, basically building this content object dynamically by adding like new keys onto the end of it. Um, and essentially what I figured out to do is like, okay, well, let's, let's just bind this to the field value and then let's just update it on every level of the loop like this. Um, for some reason that was making my brain hurt at the time. Um, but I think it, it's it's working generally now. So yeah, so that's where we stand today. Is, is this all making sense? Yeah, it does. But I think there's a, a bunch of things that are going to happen here. So one, I think this this comp uh, I think the the real power comes from the array side of things. So like as a user, if you are building a site and you want your end users to be able to change components, reorder things, and add new type new types of components and remove them, you're basically going to want to use an array. Um, and somehow we'll have to define like a, a defined value list. Maybe we'll look at JSON schema a little bit there. Um, but basically we, we want to be able to uh, potentially limit what people are putting into this section. Um, but, and, and then they should have some kind of visual option here to like click add and like, okay, I want to add a new header or I want to add a new grid or a slideshow or whatever it is, whatever's allowed to be put in here. We want to allow that. And then we want to have some kind of, you know, drag and drop interface probably here in some way to, to X out uh, of existing ones to completely delete them from the list. So that's something that um, I need to think through at some point. Uh, that will probably be a next step. Also thinking through the media capabilities, I think would be a really good thing to to start thinking about at some point um, in the near future so we can add um, files to our assets folder. Uh, and then also thinking through uh, how do we add new nodes here? So like right now, like we can only add, edit existing nodes from here. There's no way to like add a new blog post, right? So blog, uh, you know, post three or whatever down here. It would be cool if we had a way to discover our our existing components. So that would be everything. You see, this is the project here, right? So let's come up here and go up and let's, okay. So this is the content folder, right? Mm -hmm. Right now we have three um, uh, content types. I wouldn't worry about single content types because they shouldn't be duplicated, right? There's not going to be two indexes. So uh, any of these multiple content types. So that's basically saying uh, the way you discover that is like, okay, in the content folder, in the first level, are there any folders? Okay, they are. It's like, okay, you can add a blog and you could add a page. Th those are the type of things that you can add. Um, and then in here, at some point, we probably have to say, well, how? what are we defining for the, the initial field structure, right? So that's where something like mm -hmm. blueprint.json will come in or, or, or something along those lines. We'll have to figure out a way to do that in a meaningful way. Um, so I think those are kind of... Um, 
where I'm thinking might be good next steps. Another thing that I'd love to think about uh, in the future is right now, well, first of all, this this form doesn't actually save back anywhere. I have to implement what you've done here um, and mm -hmm. allow this to save back. So uh, I don't think that'd be too hard because you're just taking your content object at that point, right? Yeah. In, in your, okay. It should be quite copy and paste. Okay, good. Yeah, so I'll probably like abstract this so it can be used yeah. in between either of them. Um, and then, uh, so I think it would be cool to be able to, uh, we have right now um, on our site, uh, let's see, I think it's uh, probably SPA ejected mm.js maybe? Okay, so right now you, there's a way to tell if you're local, right? Like if this automatically gets built in. So if, if we're on a local true, um, it would be cool if we like, you know, I, I don't know, open up a WebSocket or something. So we're actually writing back to our local versus writing to mm -hmm. our remote repository. And that way, you know, you could have a workflow where like you, so for instance, I might want to say I'm a developer and I'm, I'm deploying this for a client, right? I need them to be able to edit and work right off the server without having anything local. But maybe sometimes they're like, hey, can you test out this new component and add this dummy content in there so I can look at it? And if I'm in here, I might want to save this, but I don't want to save, you know, I want to save it to where I'm working. And then I want to get commit that all locally. So it would be cool. And I think Netlify CMS is doing this now um, where they can actually connect back to their local file system and write to that when they're on, when they're developing locally. And then on the deployed site, it should write back to the repository. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think that would be kind of a cool workflow. Um, and then like, obviously, so so say I'm here and I'm developing locally, right? Like, let me just reload this page. I could come in here and I could say, you know, testing and I'm testing something out and then I could save it back locally. And then if I didn't want it, you know, you could always just like check out those changes so you don't actually save them. And that's that's a developer choice, right? So I, I feel like that workflow makes a lot of sense to me um, for what I would be looking for. Um, so yeah, th this is basically where we're at, I think. You know, I'm really happy with the progress of, of where things are going. Um, obviously, I think, you know, there's lots of UI updates in, in to make it better. I'm going to spend some time working on this form to make it make a little more sense, going to make these components a little better. Um, and then I'm also going to try to integrate this pu this publish workflow. In terms of things that I think you could be working on and thinking about, uh, I would possibly be, be thinking about maybe some media stuff or maybe potentially how we would add new components um, uh, to to like an existing file structure, right? Like how how would you how would you discover um, the the content types that you have existing? And I think by default, like I want to have, I'm I'm mostly worried about same defaults because I, I like the idea that the way this whole editing experience works is you're not really thinking about it, right? Like I'm not coming in here and I'm not rigging up. Like I want this kind of field, this kind of field. Like it's automatically discovering a lot of that stuff. Um, and of course that has limitations, but for now I, I like the idea of that. And so things like okay, when you're adding this, it should automatically discover what your content types are. And then in the future, yeah. we'll think about how to override things to make a more custom experience. But um, right now, like if I were to look at this site, like there's nothing in here that's telling me that I'm doing any CMS stuff, right? It's just like my normal layouts, my normal content. And then like there's a CMS that's automatically getting injected in there and kind of working without having to think about not having to rig up. You're not going through here and being like, oh, I need this field. I need this field. I need this field. It's actually just looking at your content source and be like, ah, this is probably what you need. Here you go. It looks like this. Boom. Um, I, that's kind of the experience I'm, I'm going for at this point. Yeah, maybe if we go with the challenge schema, we make it uh, optional. So mm -hmm. it's other discovering from the content as, as it's, it is currently. But if you want to, you can define it, objects and in RS and so on. Exactly. And that's that's kind of what I'm thinking in terms of an experience. Yeah, it's like by default, you just you can just write a content source and, and um, write a template that handles that. And then you should have some kind of editing experience. But then, of course, professionals are going to say, hey, I really can't use this auto field here. It needs to be this kind of field and it needs to have this kind of option. So at that point, yeah, allowing them to like yeah. define that is, is important for, for step one. Um, I mean, that, that, that's an interesting problem. And if you have ideas with it, definitely feel free to, to explore that. Um, mm. Highest priority for now, I think, is getting some same defaults working on some level that has the full experience. Like, okay, you can edit pages, you can add pages, and you can add media, even if it's not exactly what the person might want. As long as that kind of whole thing is working, I think that would be step one. But then down the road, be like, okay, now how do we make it so so real professionals can have a custom experience? Um, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Um, and then, yeah, also thinking through how, how we can 
do that local writing back, right? Instead of yeah. always writing to the remote remote repository, how can we write back to our local files? Um, I would say look at Netlify CMS for an example there because they're doing that. It's, it's something they didn't uh, always have. Uh, but because I think I thought that, that was impossible for Netlify CMS because it's em embedded like CMS. I, I thought it was too, so. I thought that was a challenging um, thing too because support from the server. It, it does. So that's what it does. So the way you, and I, I've done, so I've actually done it. So I know it's possible. Um, okay. I, it, it used to not have it, but I helped somebody with a project um, integrating into a Hugo site. And, and I was like, wow, this is in, in here now. And I was using it. Um, so basically what it does, uh, uh, and again, this might be completely technically wrong, but I would start like an NPM command locally, which I don't know if it's opening in a web socket or something, but it's, it's creating a connection to my local and then it's allowing it to write to the file server. So there is server stuff happening, right? But it's happening in your local environment. And that's yeah. something we could we could build into plenty, right? So for instance, when you start yeah. up your web server, we could start up that connection and we could write that. Again, just thinking about, because I don't know the technical terms for this stuff because I haven't looked into it too much. If you want to start thinking about how that might be implemented, take a look at Netlify CMS. That would be yeah. awesome. That's totally possible, yeah. Cool. To do. Great. Um, yeah, so I, I guess those are kind of like the three things that I think need some attention for now. I would say thinking about how to add new pieces of content from the content type and how that URL structure and all that stuff would, would work. Like, you know, what's the how do you define the file name? Because you have to define a file name somewhere. And, um, you know, how might we upload media? Uh, I can send you my rough mockups and my ideas for, around the actual media browser experience, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. I'd worry more about like, how can we actually upload a, a file? Like, and then we can think through the other stuff as we go. Um, and then also be thinking through um, how might we write locally when we know that we're on our local environment versus the server. Uh, of course, I know that that's a lot of stuff that's not going to all happen this week. But th these are just things I'm thinking about. Uh, feel free to pick your priority. I think they all need to get done. Yeah. For media, I thought that um, is it how much storage does GitLab actually provide for repositories and do they support a large, large format storage? That's a, that's a great question. Yeah, and these are all things that I think large yeah. sites will definitely have to um, think about at some point. So I I have n GitLab in their issue queue has a small, like a 10 um, megabyte file upload limit, but in the repository, it's large because I've put database yeah. dumps and all sorts of things in there and I have not yeah. hit a limit. So I don't know, I assume there's a limit somewhere. Like I assume they don't let you put 65 gigabytes in there, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know what that limit is. So um, you're right. Like a big site with lots of media at some point, mm -hmm. we'll have to think through that. Uh, I think based on my experience and not having tons of limits there, most smallish to mediumish sites can probably get away with whatever they're giving you. I, I would imagine. But of course, that's something that we have to think about at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also some people I know, they just hate the idea of, you know, storing their, their media and their content all and all their Git history. But um, I mean, that's kind of how this project, this is, yeah. I, I picture this project to be, it's not for the purists, you know, the purists want to separate everything and have these things. It's for the person who wants to manage things really fast and, and speak the, they want their editors to speak the same language they are because I often have problems with um, all non-technical clients. They'll delete content or they'll do things. And like in plenty, they'll, I'll know exactly what they do because they're speaking the exact same language. Everything's get, everything's trackable. I can revert things and I can check things out. So um, for me, that experience is really nice for some people. Maybe it's not their cup of tea, but that's, you know, you can't please everybody. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's the thing. There's different kinds of projects and different kinds of people. They yeah. Just have to meet each other. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, actually, a uh, few hours ago, I I made um made a quick mock-up of the my my view of the editing experience. So okay. Do you do you I want to? Go, I can yeah. I can kill my. Do you want me to kill the recording or do you want it on the? It could be on here. Okay, great. So, so just for some background for people watching the video, so you're you're working on a project that's in the same vein as is Plenty, right? So it's like a. No, a I was working this for for Plenty. Oh, for Plenty. Okay. For, okay great. Just brainstorming some ideas. Oh, sweet, sweet. So, uh, I guess this browser window is enough. Um. Can you see it? Oh, it's doing that thing where it's 
frozen again. I don't know. Okay. Oh wait, wait. No. Uh, no, Can I just see yourself? like. I see like it just says um, like JS in, in like a circle. It's like a, a placeholder for your user. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know what the heck's going on there. Um, then I have to just close the other monitor again. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Um, okay. Can you see it now? Um, it's taken a second. It looks like it's frozen on your screen. Um, no, it's doing the same thing. I'm not sure what's going on there. Huh. Do you want to sign out, sign in? I don't know if that helps. Yeah, I could reload. Yeah. Okay, let's give that a shot. Yep. Okay. And now sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, sweet. Oh. I was actually thinking of block based. Awesome. On, on, on page editing experience. That is the ultimate goal. That is like where I would love this to go. So that's awesome that you're already thinking about this. Yeah. So here's the paragraph block or whatever, what, mm -hmm. uh, text block or something. Mm -hmm. And it has inline text formatting tools. Amazing. It's just a, just a picture, but yeah. Yeah, it looks beautiful though. Yeah, like it, that. That's that's great. There's handle for, uh, for drag drop tracking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Block. And then if I was thinking, if you press the handle, it opens up a menu mm -hmm. of new blocks. Yeah. Like text and image and columns and some other blocks, and yep. to action to delete the block. Dude, this looks sweet. Yeah, this is kind of like. The ultimate holy grail of the experience. I'm picturing ex exactly kind of the same thing. So, like, when you're editing text, I wanted kind of like a tooltip pop up for like some common, like, okay, bold, underline that kind of thing. Yep. Um, and then having some kind of way to to move and delete items from the page. So this is, yeah, this is kind of where I think I want these things to go. Uh, for now, like getting the the basic thing working was like, yeah. okay, what's what's the easiest thing to 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 get somebody able to like do this experience? But this is yeah. ultimately what I picture people editing the site uh yeah doing. this kind of thing is harder to implement than the form based yeah. so maybe it, it's better it, to start with the form that yeah that's what i figured yeah because this is like yeah. because again like how like how do you implement this with it getting out of the person's way where they're not scaffolding and rigging up a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff and it just is discovering it on, on some level it's like those are starting to get into like some really interesting problems that i think uh, you know, maybe phase one, it'll, you have to rig it up yourself, but then like phase two, like, how do we, how do we do that down the road? So, um, this is great. I love the, the look of what you're doing here. It's, it's exactly what my vision is ultimately for where we're going, because I think the closer you can get the editing experience to the representation of the page that the person is mm -hmm. editing, the better, because I think a lot of people have a hard time, even like, you know, like a, a typical, like WordPress site, right? Like you have the front end, then you go to the edit side and it's like a form. I think people yeah. have a hard time translating those things. So the closer you can get the the editing experience, the actual display, the better, in my opinion. Hmm. This looks great. Yeah, that, that's the thing I wanted to show you. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. That looks that looks great. I I, I can't wait till we get to that point where we're yeah. implementing <laughs> that stuff. That's gonna be yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um. Awesome. So I'm gonna kill the recording unless there's anything else you want to discuss on it for folks to see. Yeah. Nothing comes to up to mind. Yeah. Okay. Sweet.